Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Today's video is brought to you by Faro Auto Imports. Now, are you looking for a BMW M Sport? Fully powered with powered backdoor and low mileage? Are you looking for a 2017 Honda Fit GL? Fully powered with cruise control and reverse camera? Are you looking for a fully powered Toyota Voxy with paddle shift and flip down monitor? Are you looking for a nice clean Honda CRV, Toyota Axio, Honda Stepwagon Speeder, Toyota Vitz, Nissan Wing Road, Toyota Mark X, Toyota Fielder. Well, look no further. Faro Auto Imports has all of that and much more. Just call or send Mr. Cardell Forrester, also known as Faro, a WhatsApp message at 876-859-7720. That's 876-859-7720. Zero. Now, for the month of November, there's a $50,000 cashback on every single vehicle that you buy from Faro Auto Imports. The prices are already low and you are getting a further discount. So, don't miss this deal. And more vehicles will be coming in next week. Ensure that you check with Faro Auto Imports. I can guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Now, continue to view the vehicles and the lot at Faro Auto Imports until we start today's journey. In today's journey, we have just left Montpelier in St. James and we are now heading towards Shetlode. Just sit back, relax and enjoy the viewing of the vehicles on sale as also our journey. Now, we normally start off by telling you about something about Jamaica's history or its culture, but... I will resume that in our next video. There is something very, very important that I have to share with you. A little bit over two years ago, when I decided to take YouTube serious and I started uploading some meaningful content, I was struggling to find a footing on YouTube. As you can see, I put a phone number in the description that persons could send me WhatsApp messages. I was home one day, about a year and a half ago. And I saw a strange overseas number calling me via WhatsApp. The person introduced himself to me and he told me that he was from Western Jamaica and he was drawn to my channel because I had carried a story about an incident that took place in the community where he is from. That person is the man behind that channel on your screen. The channel is named Jamaica YouTube TV. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That YouTuber, the man behind Jamaica YouTube TV, is one of the realest persons on YouTube. You see, it's the first, that day when he called me, it's the first I was talking to him. I don't know him from Adams. And we stayed on the phone for about an hour. He was on YouTube long before me. And all this time, he was telling me how to improve my delivery. Over time, he taught me a lot of things about YouTube. Whenever I wasn't sure about something, he was my go-to person. And my viewers and my subscribers, he took the time out to teach me all that I needed to know. So here is what I am asking you, my viewers and my subscribers. Go over to Jamaica YouTube TV and subscribe to that channel. Comment on his videos and deliver a message for me. Tell him that Papa said to tell him, heart of love. Jamaica YouTube TV, enough respect, my brother. Real, no real. And you, I'm not afraid to tell you, you are one of the realest persons I know. And it's not like we have ever met. We only talk on the phone. Jamaica YouTube TV, enough respect. All that I am doing now, I owe most of it to you. Enough respect. So, many of you, you might have heard the interview I did with the JDF soldier Anthony Willocks' ex-girlfriend. 
the soldier who took his own life. Now, there is something I said in the video that I must correct. I had said that if someone took their own life, the insurance company is not going to pay out life insurance, but I was wrong. Well, to an extent. A few insurance agents contacted me and they were all saying the same thing. The insurance company will not pay if the policy is less than two years old. You understand that? So, let's say that the JDF soldier, he had taken out a life insurance policy about three years ago. Whoever he had on his insurance policy as beneficiary will be paid. Got it? Yeah, man. Now, I released a video on Sunday and in the video, I appealed to a guy to return a phone. Now, that guy, he called me Sunday night and we spoke at length. Based on the conversation we had, I went ahead and I deleted that segment with him from the video. Now, let me tell you something. I did not delete it because I was sorry to put it there in the first place. But my reason for putting it there was to assist the lady, the teacher, to get back her phone. I am happy to report that the lady, she has gotten back her phone. Now, she went on Facebook last night and she posted this message. It's on your screen. Good evening, my Facebook family and friends. My phone was returned to me. First, I must thank God for his guidance and directions. Thank you guys for your time and assistance. It wouldn't be possible without your input. Thank you, Mr. Papai News Station, for icing up the cake for me. I must say a big, big thanks to the source from which I had received information in order to carry out my investigations. Thanks to the police officers who offered their services to help that night when I was so distraught. Thanks to everyone who helped in some ways. Peace, love, honesty. Be blessed and have a good night. Now, the lady and I spoke at length last night. And like I told her, I was very, very happy to assist. All is well that ends well. Now, in the news today, this first incident, it took place at a place named the Alps. This is in the region of the cockpit country in the parish of Trelawney. It took place on the afternoon of Saturday, October 29, 2022, about some minutes after 3 o'clock. We are learning that a six-apartment concrete house and all its contents were destroyed by fire. This house is owned by a lady from the parish of Trelawney, but it was occupied by some tenants. We are told that the tenants... They were at home when they saw the house engulfed in flame. The fire department and the police, they were contacted. But when the fire department reached, they were only able to do cooling down operation. We are told that the value of the house and the contents that were destroyed is a little bit under 30 million Jamaican dollars. The house nor its contents were not insured. The police and the fire department, they are now carrying out investigation to find out what could have caused this fire? Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place at the Hopewell Cemetery in the parish of Anova. It took place on Sunday afternoon, October 30, 2022, about 4 o'clock. We are learning that a grave digging was being held at the cemetery. A lot of persons were in attendance at this grave digging, but someone at this grave digging was spotted with an illegal gun. As a result, the police were told. So, a team of police officers, acting on the intelligence, they went to the cemetery. We are told that a group of persons who were seen, they were searched, but nothing illegal was found. The police officers, they decided that them now left here today because the intelligence that they got was solid. The officers, they proceeded to search the bushes adjacent to the cemetery and bingo they found one black 9mm pistol with a magazine affixed containing 7 rounds of 9mm cartridges. Now, no one was arrested in connection with this find, but congratulations to the intelligencers, 
for giving the police the intelligence and enough respect to the Hanover police for acting on this intelligence and making this find. Job well done. In this next incident, this one took place at a popular hotel in the parish of Hanover. It took place last week, Tuesday night, October 25th, 2022, about 8 o'clock. So here are the allegations. A man named Dewey Llewellyn Games. And he's on Facebook, so you can go and find him there. He's 29 years old and he's said to be an auto electrician. He's from South Wales in the United Kingdom. The allegations are that Dewey and his wife, they were in the swimming pool at the hotel when a female guest, who is also staying at the hotel, asked them if they had an iPhone charger that she could borrow because she had forgotten to bring her iPhone charger with her to Jamaica. It is alleged that Dewey told her, yes, he had a phone charger, but he would bring it to her room so that if he didn't get it back in good time, he would know where to find her. It is said that the female agreed because she must have been thinking, well, he's saying this in front of his wife, so he can be up to anything. It is alleged that the female then told Dewey her room number. Dewey, he went to his hotel room, picked up the phone charger and he headed to the lady's room. It is further alleged that when Dewey reached the lady's room and handed her the charger, he asked her if she had any coffee inside the room. He needed a drink of coffee. The lady told him yes and he was allowed in the lady's room. It is further alleged that Dewey, he pushed down the lady on the bed in the room and he had his way with her. He then left out of the room. The lady, she made a report to personnel at the hotel. The hotel, they called in the police and Dewey, he was picked up and over the weekend, he was placed on an identification parade where he was pointed out by the lady. As a result, he was arrested and charged by the police and he will be going to the court in Lucy tomorrow to face a judge. So let's see what is going to happen from here. I'm talking about sexual offenses. Listen to this. Listen to this. We are learning that the Westmoreland police, they are now searching for a masseuse after a male tourist made a sexual offense report against her. It is alleged that this sexual offense was committed whilst the lady was giving the man a massage. You know we don't carry sus over here, so. We don't carry passa passa over here, so. We are telling you the truth. Now, this allegedly took place at a popular hotel in the parish of Westmoreland. Stand by. We are gathering the details and we'll be updating this story shortly. But what we are learning is that the police, they have visited the hotel on more than one occasion. And this masseuse, she was not at work. Stand by. We are definitely going to be updating this story. In this next story, we carried a story on Monday, October 10th, 2022. And we told you about an incident that took place the previous day. Sunday, October 9th, 2022, about some minutes after 6 p.m. It took place at Pimento Hill in the Maroon Town area in the parish of St. James. In that report, we told you that hoodlums drove up in a white Toyota Vitz motor car and opened gunfire at a group of persons who were at a shop. When the shooting subsided, it was discovered that six men were shot. One of them, there is a photograph of him on your screen. His name is Garrett Leslie, but he was popularly known as Hush. Hush was only 21 years old and he lived in the same Pimento Hill area in the parish of St. James. Hush received gunshot wounds to his head and his chest. It is suspected that he died on the spot. The other five men, they were rushed to a nearby hospital where they were treated and admitted. On that occasion, the police recovered 18 9mm spent shells from that scene. Well, this incident that we are going to be telling you about now, it took place in the same lane where the six men were shot and Hush died. It took place last night, 
Monday, October 31, 2022, about 9 o'clock. Now, that youngster on your screen, his name is Joshua Swaby, but he was popularly known as Bashi Dan. He is 19 years old and he was living in the same area, Pimento Hill. Now, we are getting unconfirmed reports that Bashi Dan is the brother of the councillor caretaker candidate for the Maroon Town Division. His name is Anthony Swaby and it is said that he'll be running in the next local government election for one of the major political parties. But let me add this. We are getting no reports that this incident have anything to do with politics. We are told that this incident is as a result of gang activities in the area and the three hoodlums who carry out this act, they are said to be well known. We are told that Bashidan, he was approached by three hoodlums armed with guns. They opened gunfire at him, hitting him all over his body. Bashidan, he had no chance at survival. He died on the spot. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. The police were called and we are told that when they processed this crime scene, 20 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to do it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed to this channel, hit on the subscribe button as also hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. Now, you would have noticed that a lot of bloggers are using our contents. A lot of bloggers are using our materials. I have no problem with that. You don't even have to ask me for permission. All I'm asking is that you give us credit where credit is due. Just let your viewers and your subscribers know say over Popeye News links, you get it. Once you do that, we are good. Yeah, man, we're good. We know how the thing go, you know. We know how the thing go. And we know bad man. Food have to eat. And if I can help you to eat a food, I have no problem with that. Just give credit where credit is due. That is all I'm asking. All right? Enough respect. Now, in the final story for today, this one is very, very sad. That lady on your screen, her name is Mrs. Michelle Gill Brown. She is 53 years old and she was said to be employed as a domestic helper. She lived at retirement in the Granville area of the parish of St. James. Mrs. Brown, she was employed as a domestic helper in Montego Bay. That photo to your left on your screen is Mrs. Brown with two of the children she used to care for. We are learning that Mrs. Brown, she has been working with this family for years and she had become a part of that family. She was well loved by them. It is said that Mrs. Brown, she was honest, she was hardworking, she was respectful and she was a person of integrity. But there were some serious issues at home. Mrs. Brown, she had a son. The son is in his 20s and it is said that he is mentally challenged. It is also said that he was very disrespectful to his mother. He would also steal from her from time to time. We are told that Mrs. Brown, she was last seen alive on Sunday, October 30, 2022 about some minutes after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yesterday, Monday, October 31, 2022, Mrs. Brown's employers, they were waiting for her to come to work. It is said that Mrs. Brown, she's always early for work. Her employers, they tried calling her phone, but it rang without an answer. As a result, her employers called the Granville Police Station and they told them what was happening. We are learning that a team of police officers, they went to the home of Mrs. Brown at retirement. When they reached, the house was securely locked up. 
the officers, they managed to peep through a window and what they saw inside the house shocked the daylight out of the police officers. We are told that the officers, they managed to force open a window and they entered the house. The house, it was completely ransacked and there was Mrs. Michelle Gail Brown with her body parts all over the house. Now, if you are easily perturbed or easily upset, I'm going to encourage you to skip this section of the video. But I'm going to have to describe how Mrs. Brown was found. She was found on the floor in the house. She was found covered with a white sheet. Her head was taken off. Did you hear that? And all that I'm telling you, all the injuries Mrs. Brown received were caused by someone using a machete. So, like I was saying, Mrs. Brown's head was taken off. Both her hands were almost taken off. Mrs. Brown had multiple wounds inflicted by a machete all over her body. Now, the head that was taken off, it was found wrapped in a towel in the kitchen. Mrs. Brown, she did not deserve that death. And do you know who the prime suspect is? Her son, Shemoy Brown. We are told that last night when the police were processing the crime scene, Shemoy came on the scene and he was taken into police custody. Persons are saying that Shemoy, he has a long history of being violent to his mother. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Popeye News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Don't you be having me here, them a murder 